What is going on my peeps and man versatile is back with another video back here to talk about one of my favorite lenses that I have been primarily using with my Sony a7 III and that is this baby right here the Sony full frame 85 millimeter f1.8 lens the compression is beautiful baby but before we get into the video, if you guys haven't already, make sure you guys ignite the like button on this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, so that way you never miss my videos. Then we can sit back, chillax, and see what's cracking. Now let's get into the video. How has this lens been since I've had it? I think I've had this lens for quite some time now. I'd have to actually look, but it's either been six months or it's been a year, um, or over a year. I, I, I'm trying to really think, did I get it last year? No, I had to have had it 2019. I think I got it. If not late 2019, I got an early 2020. But this lens has been a game changer for me. Yes, you guys know I love the 55 mil from Zeiss that I don't have. I use that at camera camp, loved it. You know, now, as of this video, that 50, that new uh, full frame 50 1.2 G Master, uh -huh. I'll take that over to 55, I ain't gonna lie, you know what I'm saying? I like that lens too. The 50 mil is a very good look and it's a very good neutral lens in terms of both video and photo. The surprising thing about this 85 is that I use this a lot for video. I used it, I think once or twice in my creator's block short film that I shot. And for some B-roll, I'll use the 85 just because I like the compression. What, am I, what do I mean by compression? It's basically how it really tightens the shot and the background seems like it's a little bit closer than what it really is. And it really just gives, us, gives it this nice look and that bokeh. <laughs> you know, as you start getting into photography and videography or cinematography, if you will, and you start learning a lot of this, I'm liking that intermediate you know realm i wouldn't say beginner because i'm putting i, I put in a, a year or two now i wouldn't necessarily say a beginner but also learn quick but you, as you start learning about what that is or what that little sweet touches with that lenses or cameras add to uh, a quality photo or a quality video it, you start to appreciate it in a different way and so with this 85 one the size is great like it doesn't weigh that much uh, now again with this channel every now and then i go into like super stats about you know or specs about you know tech items with the with can with uh, lenses is really not too much that you really could talk about in terms of specs i mean weight wise it's not bad it's for a full frame camera i've not used it on my a6100 yet because it will effectively give me like a 142 and a half millimeter focal length equivalent just because of the crop sensor the, or the 1.5 times zoom basically on on a crop sensor body and with the full frame, I get to take advantage of this. It's got a custom button. I use this to surprisingly change my resolution, if you will, or aspect ratio of pictures that I take with it. So if I'm taking thumbnails, I'll hit that button so I can switch to 16 by nine. So that way I can shoot at, at that size and, and compose a shot for a thumbnail. Whereas if I'm taking general pictures, I don't really need to use this for anything else. I use a focus hole with the actual uh, shutter button and I use single shot autofocus, which means I'm constantly having to readjust a shot if I haven't, if I'm, uh, you know, readjusting the model that I'm shooting or the scene that I'm shooting, I'm constantly having to readjust focus anyway. So using this as a focus hole button does not work for me or my style of shooting. But it's nice to still have an option and have it customized for whatever you want to do. Of course, it also has an autofocus and manual focus button. So switching that back and forth will allow you to adjust on the fly there. I also have it triggered on my camera to hit a button. I think it's C3 on my a7 III to switch between manual and autofocus. So a lot of times I'm not really touching the lens, you know, and if I decide to use manual focus, the focus by linear uh, that Sony uses for their focus, uh, the reaction time is fast, it's not tight, it's actually relatively loose, and it's very responsive. I haven't had any issues with it. I actually took a picture of a snail one time and I got to kind of see like this focal plane where I saw that I had within range in terms of how close I could get to this little snail or slug that was like on the ground that I saw by my house. And I used the 85 to shoot that and it was pretty nice. I mean, it was kind of getting a little dark so I had to kind of bump up exposure in a post, but 
that, that's that's the beauty of this lens is that it's still versatile or versatile <laughs> despite the semi telephoto approach of the 85 millimeter lens now taking this baby off as you guys can see it's got like a wider look the filter thread is 67 millimeters and I use uh, the Polar Pro 82 millimeter ND filter two to five stop and I use the Polar Pro's um, uh, filter step up ring I forgot what it's actually called on the outside but it gives it that extra grip uh, something that Gerald Undone really loves about you know uh, I guess step up rings or whatever but the, the grooves is what I'm talking about but I I love the the look of this lens it looks really good and it's still compact enough where it doesn't feel unnecessary but it also feels like it's there it has presence and that's one of the things that I really really enjoy about the 85 millimeter which is probably why I like leaving on my camera so much because even though I like using my 50 my 50 just feels a slightly too small for my a7 III which is why I like when you see the new 50 1.2 that Sony just dropped it looks slightly bigger than this probably but it's also in the same realm of shape and size now also keep in mind on the body there is no aperture ring so it's just focus cuz uh, the folk the custom button and the auto and the focus uh, button so the focus toggle if you will so in terms of this lens and again as I use I use it for a lot of video and a lot of photos that I've taken throughout the year I probably put some of them up I took that with I took those with this lens and that's why I like it. Right now, of course, I'm shooting with my six, Sigma 16, hoping to get the Sony's full frame 20 mil that they dropped last year, or I'm kind of starting to lean into the 24 G Master, but <laughs> I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Um, we'll see. I, I, I know one of the lenses I need to get is a 35 millimeter. That's the lens I really need to get, and I'm really looking at the 35 1.4, just cause as um what i can't believe i forgot his name now but he's a real cool dude on youtube he says buy it nice or buy it twice as he says i'd rather buy it nice and not have to buy it for a good while again so although the 35 1.8 that sony dropped also if not last year 2019 is a good lens i'd rather get a lens that i can invest in and keep for a minute because g masters don't typically uh, upgrade you know what i'm saying to another g master maybe it gets a refresher if there's something wrong with it but Sony, I think, has had to, if not push off, has had to delay the launch of the 35 1.4, if not because of demand, because they, I think they may have found a, an issue with the lens, but don't hold me to that. So, but my lenses that I have, I have the Sigma 16, I got the Sony full frame 50mm 1.8, and then I got the Sony full frame 85 1.8. I have seen the... 8514 looks amazing. I think Armando Ferreira at, at the camera camp was actually recommending me to shoot with this lens. But I think this lens had just came out uh, not that long ago. Or it was the 8514, but I think it was the 8518 and it was all rented out. I know I really like this lens, so I know I would love the 8514 because it's a G Master. And yeah, of course, who who's you know wish list wouldn't be to upgrade all the lenses from the real nice full frame to the G Master. Because if I'm looking at trying to only have like five lenses, I would have the 20 or 24 G Master, the 35 14 G Master, the 51 2 G Master, the 85 G Master, and the 135 G Master. Those are my five primes that I would keep. And then my one zoom lens would probably be, uh, if it's not the Sigma's 28 to 70, if it's not Sony's 24 to 70, which I really don't think it would be, it might be Sony's 24 to 105 G mass or G lens. It's an F4. I really hope that they upgrade that. And if it's not a G master, they just, you know, upgrade it from F4 to 2.8. That would be really nice. But that would be my one zoom lens that covers a good variety of focal length that I could take if I didn't want to bring any primes. I just want to go run a gun real quick, quick shoot or something like that. Maybe just walking about. You want to get some street photography in that's the one lens that's the one zoom lens i could have outside of my five primes but the the, the, the primes i'm rocking with right now have been pretty good but that's where like i would like to go and kind of bump up to that 20 to 24 millimeter for my wide angle look because six because 16 could be so wide now of course it's a crop lens or aps-c lens on a full frame body so effectively it is 24 equivalent but it's nothing like actually having a full frame where you don't lose any quality 
and there's like a slight bump in quality, especially when it comes to 1080p. Uh, Sony's 1080p on A7 III is much more on the soft side. So you may have to bump up sharpness, if not with the creative style or uh, picture profile you're using in post, try to bump up some sharpness. So that, that that's there. But when I'm shooting with this 85, when I tell y'all this 85 is smooth, that's why I like it. Like most of the pictures I prefer to take with the 85 because the compression just, it wows me. <clears throat> I like my 50, don't get me wrong. I love my 52 and I like using my 50 on my A6100, which I've been doing recently because my A7 III is trapped in the small rig cage system that I have. But this 85, I would recommend to you guys. I believe the price that I bought it at was 600 on Amazon. Of course, links will be in the description. If you're looking for a budget lens in the 85, 1.8 category, that will still give you really good quality. Viltrox's 85 millimeter is a silent lens to look at too. And then of course, if you got big boy pants money, get that Sony full frame 85 1.4 because you will not go wrong with that. Especially if you have a Sony camera, of course. You know, if you don't have a Sony camera, of course, I'm sure uh, Canon's got an, I think an RF 85, probably a 1.2, <clears throat> uh, 1.2, you know, so really wide open aperture. I'm getting into photography and I'm really learning a lot of things and I'm actually glad for that because they say the more you learn, the more you teach, the more you teach, the more you learn. So that's what I'm also kind of doing with these videos now on my channel is when I get to learn this, if I understand it or to help me better understand it, I come to you guys and dispense what I'm learning. <clears throat> so Sony 8518 silent lens if you're looking for, it's probably about 600 and you might even find it for just under that, maybe 550 or so. Again, links will be down in the description. But let me know what you guys think. You like the 85 millimeter focal length? Do you like telephoto lenses? Have you used any other 85 or any other recommendations? Do you plan on actually getting one? If you haven't, let me know down in the comment section below. But again, if you haven't already, make sure you guys ignite the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you never miss my videos. So we can sit back, chill, like, see what's cracking. But your man Burst was signing out and until the next video. Wait for. Oh.